Hello, in this video we're going to look at the score function, sometimes just called the score, and, and show that it does, uh, it is asymptotically normal. So we'll, we'll go through some background information before we jump into the nitty gritty details. Um, the log likelihood we're going to let represent uh, L of theta, and that's the log of the likelihood. Now, there's a subscript X, so we can put like a little X to show that, that the data are fixed. You know, we, did, we took a sample of size N, and now it's fixed. And then, you know, um, but in this video, if we were to take, an, you know, another sample of size N, those values for X would be slightly different. Okay, so... This is a, it's a random quantity, so we put a, a, a big X or capital X to say that this is a random. And, and when we think about it like that, then we can look at its uh, sampling properties. And so we're going to think of it as a, of, a, of a random sample, but instead of writing X, we're going to say N. And then, so that's really, you know, we're going to look at the likelihood from a sample size N. And when you talk about asymptotic normality, you know, you think of as n goes to infinity, so as our sample size goes to infinity. We're going to look at the sampling distribution of the log likelihood. Now the score often is written as a, a capital U of theta. It's really the first derivative of our log likelihood. And if we were to find the MLE, the maximum likelihood, we would set this equal to zero and solve for theta. And then that would be our maximum likelihood estimate for theta. Now the Fisher information is, it's the variance of the uh, score function, or the variance of the score. And, and it's represented by capital I of N of theta. And it's, yeah, the variance of the score. Now, what, when we go further, this is the, uh, the big assumption that we can differentiate under the integral sign. And that means if we want to enter or take the, uh, uh, the derivative of this, then we're assuming that you, we can pull it through the integral sign. And in most of the uh, common you know, distributions, this is, this is easily satisfied. But we have to assume it's true. In general so now let's just start going through notes and we're going to build this you know step by step and then boom then it's going to be asymptotically normal so if we integrate any PDF so this is for all PDF F if you integrate it over the range of X it's one and, and that's ha it has to be that's the definition of a PDF so now when we take the derivative of both sides, the derivative of one is zero, and then we can pass the in, uh, derivative inside it, and then, and so no matter what derivative, the first, second, the third derivative, it, it's all zero. And, we, and you can write this in a different way, you know, the integral of f prime dx is zero. So this is essentially this when it's the k is one. And for the second derivative, we can write it like this. The integral of f double prime dx is zero. Now, we want to take, oh, the, I rewrite this, it, it's, it's shorthand. So the log likelihood is equal to, the, it's the natural log of our joint density. Okay, so this is sort of shorthand notation. And then when you take the derivative of a log, it's one over that and then times the derivative of this. And that's what this says. It's one over f and then times the derivative of f. And that's your score. That's your, your um, yeah, first derivative. And so the second derivative, we take the, the derivative of this. And the way I think about it is uh, um, there's a, 
a quotient rule, of course, but my mind takes product rule. So I always bring that up and then raise it to the minus one and then take the derivative of that product. And then it simplifies to this. Um, oh, note here that that kind of looks like the score squared. Um, so now let's take the expected value of our score. So whenever you take the expected value, since this is a function of f, then the lotus, the law of the unconscious statistician says that you take it times the density, integrate over all possible values. But the derivative or the score is, is this, which we just said. So the f's cancel, leaving the integral of f prime dx. But we said that was zero. So the expected value of the score is zero. Now let's look at the expected value of the second derivative which um, says take the second derivative which is this take it times f <coughs> and then integrate over all possible values so this piece here the f the f's cancel leaving just um, the integral of f double prime dx and then this is just the expected value whatever it is now um, Oh, then, then I say equal to this, which is showing that this is zero, and it's just equal to that. Now, um, this looks like the score. So it's actually the negative expected value of the score squared. <coughs> and since the expected value of the score is zero, this is just equal to the variance of the score. And so the, expe the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood is the variant, the negative variance of the score. So these are all items that we're building up to show normality. So as a quick review, the, uh, the joint density, since they're IID, is just a product of each of those. So then when you take the log of it, the log of a product is the sum of the log which is what this is and then the uh, first derivative the score is um, you know it, it's a linear operator so it just passes into each of these and then the second derivative is actually just the second derivative of all that now this is where it starts to become like so interesting so the law of large number says that if you do something long enough, the, the sample mean is going to limit to the theoretical mean, you know, the expected value of it. And so here, we're starting to, sh we have a sum of IID random variables. So if we were to divide this by N, that's starting to look like a mean. And so th then that would limit to this expected value of, of one of those. And that's where we're going to go with this. But before we do, we have to create uh, what's the, you know, well, we'll, we'll do this. So the, so the Fisher information was the variance, the negative variance of the score, and that's based on a sample of size n, so it's the log, the log likelihood. But what this statement says is that if, if you take n times the uh, variance of the score of a sample size of 1, these two are the same, sample size n, sample size 1 times n. They're the same. And you can kind of see that here. The Fisher information is the uh, variance of the, of the score. Okay. But the, the score is this. It's the sum of these partial derivatives. And since these are IID, you, you mean we can take the variance in and then there's no covariance associated with the, each of them but this right here is really the uh, it's it's the Fisher information of a sample of size one so this is the Fisher information of sample size one but there's n of those t 
tight, you know, uh, we're summoning a constant in time, so it's in of those. Now, the, the, the big theorem here. So by the central limit theorem, this minus its expected value, which is zero, times the square root of n, limits to a normal zero, uh, and then this Fisher information. And, and that, that's it. That's the central limit theorem. And then if we, we take the, um, multiply the square root of n uh, in, then this becomes the square root of n. The zero, of course, goes away. Then if we multiply the square root of n to the front of this, and then take it in, we have to square it, so it becomes n times the fissure of a sample size of one to the fissure information of the sample. So this is approximately normal zero fissure information. So now let's do an example to illustrate this. And this is this is borrowed from a website somewhere. I'd have to go look it up, and I apologize for not quoting that uh, or giving credit where it should be due. Um, we're going to let X be uh, the number of goals in a random soccer game. Okay, and We're going to assume that X follows a Poisson distribution, and this is the distribution for a Poisson. And we're going to test, is the mean 3 or is it not 3? Okay, So the, the joint distribution is the product of the individuals because they're ID, which then becomes this. The log likelihood, you take the, the log of this and it becomes this. And then, and then we're going to cover this up. This is the likelihood right here. Now if we set it to zero and solve for theta, we get the maximum likelihood estimate, which is x bar. And then the Fisher information is the variance of, of the score. And then you just take the variance of this. The, con the variance of a constant goes away. And so you bring out the theta, and that becomes squared. And then it's the variance of the sum, but their ID, so it's the variance of 1, which is theta. So there's n theta of them. One of those thetas cancels with one of those. And you just get n theta. Now, before we move on, um, I want to quickly change the topic, but you'll understand why. So let's say there's a big lake, and we measure every fish in the lake, and the average is, is 11 inches. So the average fish length is 11, okay? And we, in it, and all millions of fish we measured. But if we were to take a sample of size 100, and, and find the average fish length, and we got 10.5, is that enough evidence to say that the true fish length is not 11? Well, it, you know, that's, we don't know. I mean, because the sample properties is a little bit different than the, than the population property. And so that's actually what we're gonna test here, use the score. Um, there's the theoretical score, and then if we collect the sample size in, what score do we observe? And if that the observed score is much different than what we expect, then we'd say no, the true the true mean is not what we expect. But if the score is within a, is at least consistent, then we would say that yeah, there's not enough evidence to say it's not you know that and so so here by the central limit theorem we'd expect the score to behave like a a normal distribution would mean zero and variance this and if it goes f too far outside that then we will reject okay so here we have um here's our number of goals and frequencies you know games totals 380 uh, the sample mean would be 2.57, our score, and then notice we put the hypothesized score in of 3, 
which is this, and we get uh, negative 55. Now the Fisher information using the hypothesized three, we, we get this. Now our test statistic becomes, a, it's a Z, so you take the score minus, um, you know, divided by its standard deviation, and it, and it, it should follow a, a standard normal, because this is where it's mean of zero, so you take the value minus the mean divided by standard deviation, that's a standard normal. So let's plug in those values, and we get negative 4.855, which is way in the left tail, which says that we're going to reject. And the true mean is not three goals per game. We could also do this, you know, the square, the, if you square a standard normal, you get a chi squared. So if you square it, then, you know, we would get this value. And in both cases, the p value is the same 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6. So the strong evidence that the mean of the mean number soccer, mean number of goals in a soccer game is not 3. But graphically, this is what's going on. So if we look at our distribution, this is our observed distribution from, you know, and we're hypothesizing that it's a, a Poisson mean three, but this is what we observed. Now we take the log likelihood and we get something like this. Now it's maximized, and my drawing is not the best, it's maximized at 2.57, which was the, uh, the MLE, which is this, okay? So if we were to plug in three to our observed uh, uh, likelihood, we get this value. And the score is the, is the derivative of the likelihood. So it's actually the slope. Um, so we're looking at this slope. Now, we would expect, under, if it's exact, that the slope would be zero you know, right at the peak. But since we're off a little bit, the slope, you know, varies down to this. And is that slope an, enough different than zero to say that that's not the correct assumption, you know, that the mean is three. So anyway, that's what we're doing. The score looks at it is that expected slope too big. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I did. Uh, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.